Yes, sir, Nanya. Okay. Yes, Bhargav. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to the second session of the third international conference on contemporary progression in forensic science. Hope you are all safe and sound. Thank you all for joining us. Our first speaker for the second session is Professor Federico Baudino from Argentina. Good morning and welcome to Professor Federico. Buenos dias y bienvenidos al Professor Federico Baudino a la tercera conferencia virtual internacional en India. Estamos muy felices de tenerte aquí. You can start the presentation now, sir. Muchas gracias, eh, Vargas. Eh, yo soy el que está muy feliz de oh, la invitación. Un minuto. Un minuto. Uh, uh, Professor Federico is a lawyer, public calligrapher, and an expert of forensic animation and virtual for reconstruction of criminal cases. He has a degree and diploma in criminals and criminology and methodology of research in the judicial field. He is the creator of virtual reconstruction office of the General Directorate of Judicial Police of the province of Cordoba, Argentina. He is the trainer and distributor of Argentina e Mexico of the North American company Faro Technologies. Federico is an official calligrapher at the TSJ for eight years and control expert and technical advisor in countries such as Spain, Peru, Bolivia, Chile, Mexico, Paraguay, among others. He is also the director of the postgraduate degree and various theses of bachelor's degree in criminals and criminology. Federico is the creator of the complex cause indexing system and forensic internship system. He is the exhibitor in international presentations from countries such as Brazil, Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, Chile, Italy, Spain, Venezuela, and Argentina, and author of various research papers and publications linked to forensic and criminal sciences. You can start the presentation now, sir. Muchas gracias, Marga. Eh, un placer a todos saludarlos eh, y, y estar en conexión desde Argentina, desde Sudamérica. La exposición de hoy, la charla de hoy, va a estar eh, relacionada a lo que es el trabajo, el estudio y la reconstrucción de rastros de sangre en la escena del crimen. ¿Cómo vamos a trabajar eh, los rastros de sangre para poder identificar qué fue lo que sucedió en el presunto hecho criminal que se investiga? Cuando nosotros iniciamos eh, una investigación de muerte violenta, sea por arma blanca, arma de fuego, un golpe con un elemento contundente, vamos a tener estos rastros que el delito dejó en las cosas, que son proyecciones de rastros hemáticos, de rastros de sangre, en el escenario. A partir de estos rastros, nosotros tenemos distintas formas de estudiarlos, para poder recrear y entender qué fue lo que sucedió. En primer lugar, cómo vamos a posicionar a la víctima en relación a esos rastros. A partir de ello, cómo vamos a posicionar al victimario. Qué explicación vamos a dar en la secuencia fáctica. Qué golpe sucedió primero, qué impacto sucedió después. Vamos a poder establecer cuál fue el elemento que produjo estas salpicaduras de rastros de sangre. Pero para ello necesitamos tener un estudio técnico, eh, forense, pericial, que nos permita recrear desde un punto de vista físico estos presupuestos que le acabo de comentar. Lamentablemente en, en Latinoamérica y en gran parte de Europa, desconozco de Asia, pero en gran parte de Europa también, no se trabajan estos rastros de sangre en el escenario como debería. Una forma de trabajar de manera convencional es realizar proyecciones de cada gota de sangre a partir de eh, un trabajo con fórmulas físicas 
con seno y coseno y con hilos. Nosotros vamos a buscar proyectar cada una de las gotas de sangre para procurar encontrar una zona de convergencia o punto de convergencia. Cada una de estas gotitas la vamos a proyectar con hilos para establecer dónde fue el origen del de impacto y a partir de eso recrear el hecho criminal. Esto es una forma de trabajar eh, más difícil por el simple hecho de que se requiere eh, estar en el lugar del hecho, se requiere el trabajo de más de una persona, se requiere mucho tiempo para trabajar el escenario con, con esta técnica. No es tan... No es tan sencillo poder llevar adelante este trabajo. Yo trabajo con la empresa Faro Technology, eh, Faro Technology yes, que trabajamos con scan láser, lidar terrestre, es decir, eh, es un hardware que nos permite a nosotros tirar una gran cantidad de láser por segundo para recrear el escenario del suceso en tres dimensiones. ¿sí? Para poder trabajar eh, con todas las medidas con un margen de error de menos de 2 milímetros. Los resultados, cuando trabajamos con escáner láser, van a ser mezclar lo que se llama la nube de puntos, el resultado de todos los registros del láser con fotografías esferográficas para tener fotos de esta manera. Nos va a permitir tener un modelo tridimensional como un plano en 2D. Y va a permitir trabajar, que es lo que voy a exponer hoy, estos rastros de sangre, desde el punto de vista técnico-científico, utilizando software y hardware, ¿sí? con el mismo objetivo, procurar establecer la zona de origen, el punto de convergencia, y de esa manera identificar la posición de la víctima, y posteriormente utilizando la, el estudio interdisciplinario de todos los elementos de prueba legalmente incorporado, establecer la herida y la posición del victimario. ¿Cómo vamos a trabajar con este software? ¿Sí? ¿Cómo vamos a trabajar con eh, el software que se llama Farozone 3D? Lo primero que tenemos que tener en cuenta es que para trabajar un escenario de, eh, del suceso en el cual tenemos rastros de sangre Federico. y queremos... Re sí. Uh, sí, sorry for the interruption. Uh, I yes. wanted to tell the audience that the presentation will be in English. This is just the intro, so please relax and be with us. Uh, yo lo había armado para hablar en español. Eh, bueno, puedo intentar hablar en inglés despacio. De If you want. Ok. We work with, with the hardware. With this hardware, this is a, a leader a scanner laser. Que eh, with, with this hardware, we can be Point of convergence use the hardware and the software. Use the uh, Farozone 3D for work to the, uh, the blood and the point of convergence. We work with the, uh, the, the, the name of the software is Farozone 3D. The first that we do is a picture with a camera of the blood. Blue spine. With this picture, we work them with the uh, cloud 
eh, of the scanner eh, laser. The first we need to do is uh, uh, put uh, these pictures for work with the picture and the uh, cloud of the scanner laser in, this, in the software. When we do this picture after we work with the software uh, click in the blue yes click in the blue and the the software work a uh, edge detection automatically use the intelligence artificial then we put in one blood yes an automatic the software work with the plane and the trajectory. You can see here that we have three picture, yes, and the cloud work with the hardware. In the software, we can be take another blood and we have the out of convergence here. The work is uh, easy uh, that the software, we can ha have to choosing the third, this mark for uh, work with the picture and the cloud. And then we put uh, only this blood for the point of conversion. Lo siento have... por, la, por el interrupción, pero no sí. ver el uh, compartir la pantalla. No se está compartiendo. A ver. No. Sí. No se vio antes. No se vio antes, eh, Vargas. Sí. ¿Se, se estaba viendo antes o no? Ah. Sí, sí, el antes. Okay. I say that the we we have two two form of, of work the blue spine. The first is with com, uh, work with ilos, see, with lines. And the another uh, form is work with hardware and software. With hardware and software, we have a clone to point. We have model 3D. We have a plane 2D. And work with point of convergence, uh, work with hardware and software. This software, El Farazon 3D, is very easy to work. We have two things. First, the marks in, in, the, in the wall. And we have a take a picture of the blue. Then we, we work to edge detection. This is automatic. And we have the trajectory of, of this blue working with with the picture and the and the cloud we have the point of convergence okay when we work with this software we, we will have a expert report yes this expert report will be the all information for uh, for the first result yes look the pictures and we have them to work with the uh, people for uh, for work the possession of the uh, victim and victim in the forensic animation okay when we work in in twist uh, in the transmission of conclusion the expert 
uh, can be speak only can be speak and uh, illustrate pictures yes it can be speak and illustrate forensics animation yes when we when we work with this technology uh, we can't uh, work with a virtual reality the virtual reality uh, can be for us uh, a lot of of uh, animation for work first we can do this uh, this uh, hardware see these uh, glasses and we, we can be enter to the same cream we have a menu a, a drop down menu it can be work in on all uh, crime scene. Now I look in to the uh, uh, victimario see? and the traject bulls in the uh, roof of the, this house. Okay, this moment. This work with uh, the the cloud of a uh, scanner laser faro that. Uh, in the reconstruction animation. We can be do with uh, numbers, say reference, for works with another spurt in the uh, crime scene. We have a number, we can uh, measurement, medidas for works in the crime scene. Okay, we can a uh, annotation for the the, the mensarines. We can uh, write annotation too when we work with these technologies. And we have a play animation, forensic animation, and I can see this animation of a. Uh, in this point, in this point, in this point. This is important for uh, uh, see that the, so the, the, the people that's washed in the crime scene, okay? This is very important for work. Now I'm going to uh, uh, um, work with a criminal case in Argentina, see? Caso Nisma. Uh, people that uh, we work, if these people shoot uh, yourself on or another people uh, uh, shooting him in the bathroom. This blood paint is very important for uh, understand if uh, Nisma this is this, Nisma, this be uh, in, in me, in the, in, the, in the floor, or he is stand uh, in front of the mirror. Okay. Now I am working with the software, the, the Farosong 3D, for uh, do the trace of blood and virtual reconstruction. His Nisma. And there are two posture, yes, position. Position one, Nisman are in the floor, floor with two people that uh, ha, uh, is, uh, shoot in the head. Position two, he suicide, see, and he stand in front of the mirror, stand up, okay. Position two, position two. Now I'm working with the blue stain for understand if wash the position one or is wash the position two. Okay. This is the blue. 
OK? I'm working with the uh, software Farosom 3D take in the blue, OK? Take the first, and the, pro the projection is this. But I, I see, I can see that this project of the blue are of another position for there, for there, for there. And we can see that the blue stain, the trajectory of blue stain are of another position, okay? For there, for there, for there. The report, blue spater report. And when we work with this uh, uh, back spatter, a uh, retro salpicadura back spatter, the, the, the blood spatter be there in one direction, okay? Of the one direction, uh, always one direction. But now we have a, a lot of direction, okay? With good work, we can say that the blood uh, can be of another direction. So we come to affir affirm that uh, Nisman uh, wash stand up in front of Miro and he this blood if of the mouth, okay? If of the mouth. He walk, shoot in your head, and this blood can be the um, your mouth here, and the blood wash for another direction. Okay, we say that the he this blood uh, a washing of the head is washing back spatter is this wash of the mouth. Okay. Perfect. When we work with this uh, technology, uh, we can uh, do the forensic animation with report, do the hard be, uh, working with hardware, working to a crime scene in 3D. And, and after we work with the software for, uh, for work in this uh, uh, with this technology. So in this work, we said that uh, Nisman uh, uh, should in this position in your head, and this is a wash of your mouth, this blue, okay? And uh, I speak with another technology, we, we say that the first wash of work is with this, with this technology. The first work with this technology, but in, in a lot of time we can't be in the crime scene because uh, we work after that uh, the the pictures, uh, the, the 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 work of the expert in the crime scene. So we need to work with technology. We need to work with software and hardware. And it, it's, it's, it's a firm to uh, work this conclusion, this conclusion with another technology, yeah, uh, with software and hardware and virtual reality. Okay. Uh, it's all for me. Sorry, we, uh, with my English is not very good. I, I think I thought that I speak in Spanish, and um, uh, I hope that uh, you can understand something that I speak. And uh, thank you for uh, your invitation, Varga. Uh,
thank you very much for your valuable time and sharing your knowledge with us i'm sure that we all have learned from you we hope for more events and interactions with you sir muchas gracias por su valioso tiempo y por compartir su conocimiento con nosotros estoy seguro de que gente de la india ha aprendido mucho de ti muchas gracias thank you very much uh, for invitation Bye bye. Bye bye. Our second speaker for the session is Dr. Alejandro Hernandez Cardenas. Dr. Alejandro is a forensic odontologist and expert in rehydration of corpses and a professor at State Police School. in Ciudad Ciudad Juárez Chihuahua Mexico he is the first and only state authorized expert in rehydration of corpses he is an active member and national delegate of the National College of Legal and Forensic Dentistry and Mexican Society of Criminology he is certified by the National College of Forensic Science as expert in soft tissue rehydration in mummified corpses and in reversal of rot processes with forensic purpose of identification and determination of cause of death in february 2014 he was distinguished with the appointment of non european honorary scientificity by the european society of forensic science cefico he began the investigation into soft tissue rehydration of mummified corpses in may 2003 with the permission of the authorities of the attorney general's office of the state of chihuahua in the facilities of the medical forensic service on a personal initiative and with own financial resources after 15 months of exper- experimentation he achieved the formula that gave the best results to the fingers that were placed on it since then it has been working ex- exclusively with the with this formula seeking to optimize the results and reduce the exposure time in 2004 he performed the first rehydration for the purpose of official identification in a mummified body of the city of casas grandes chihuahua which was estimated a 5 year old chronotta diagnosis which was identified thanks to the fingerprint obtained from the rehydrated fingers since that date he has carried out a large number of rehydration processes already officially requested by the public prosecutors providing useful information for the identification of numerous victims as well as supporting the forensic physicians in determining the cause of death and achieving the and achieving to date rehydrate and reserve rot of complete bodies including internal organs in may 2009 he began the patent process for the chemical formula and the technique for the rehydration of soft tissues in mummified corpses and reversal of rotting processes for forensic purpose of identification and determination of cause of death in 2016 he was granted this patent we are very happy to have you sir Marco, you can share the slides. Doctor Cardenas. Sí, Vargas. Tú me dices cuándo puedo iniciar. Sí, yo voy a iniciar.
you can start the presentation yes, now. Please. Yo, yo estoy listo. Me dices cuando ya puedo empezar. Uh, for the participants, I would like to tell them that I would uh, be translating uh, what Sir says in Spanish. Sí, Dr. Cárdenas. Ya. Yeah. Muy bien. Me voy, a, me voy a ir pasando las primeras diapositivas. Sí. So, Dr. Cárdenas is working for a justice with a scientific support and a science with a humanist sense. ¿La puedes avanzar, por favor? Muy bien. Es, esta frase me gusta mucho. Se me hace que es, dice una gran verdad. Que todos debemos luchar porque se haga justicia para las personas que pierden la vida en hechos violentos. The dead cannot demand justice. It is the duty of the living to do it for them. La que sigue, la puedes cambiar. Bueno, este es el título de la presentación. Es el título o nombre de mi trabajo. Es algo largo, es algo grande, extenso. Necesario para que explique bien de qué es lo que se trata. ¿Lo puedes traducir? Sí. The rehydration of soft tissues present in the mummified cadavers and devotion of putrefaction processes for forensic purpose of identification and diagnosis of cause of death. ¿Me puedes cambiar lo que sigue? Bueno, voy a ir hablando despacio para que les puedas explicar lo que voy diciendo. Sí. Son dos fenómenos cadavéricos diferentes. Uno es la momificación y otro es la putrefacción. Sí. There are two, there are two uh, process. One is uh, putrefication and second is mummification. En no todo el mundo puede darse el caso de la momificación. Se requieren ciertas condiciones de clima y territorio. No one in the world knows the case of mummification in any region. Pero la putrefacción sí va a suceder en cualquier parte del mundo. That is not carried out anywhere in the world. En, en, con, con los dos fenómenos cadavéricos, se cambia, cambia mucho el aspecto físico del cadáver. ¿Sí? Sí, siguiente, por favor. La puedes cambiar. Esos son textos que tú estás manejando. Sí. The definition, procedures through which seek to restore the most possible and as normal condition of rehydration of all the soft tissues present in cadaveric cadavers which are found in garden or mummified as well as reverse putrefication processes not very advanced and with it reintegrate their physical characteristic and more or close 
to the natural or normal state. Muy bien. ¿Me puedes cambiar la que sigue? Esas, tú tienes el control de esas. Sí, el objetivo. Debido a que no es fácil identificar esos cuerpos, muchos de ellos terminan eh, yendo a lo que se conoce como fosa común, como no identificados o desconocidos, generando que sean muchas las familias, provocando que sean muchas las familias que nunca llegan a saber en dónde ter eh, terminó su, su ser querido, su familiar. It is not very easy to identify the dead bodies so he has known a lot of families that go through this podrá en ocasiones ser identificados por medio de genética y entregados a sus familiares pero también estos fenómenos cadavéricos no permiten que el médico forense determine cuál fue la causa de la muerte provocando con ello que al no haber causa de muerte no se pueda realizar una investigación por un posible delito. It is ¿Sí? a very hard process that is developed by him for recovering physical characteristics that facilitate the identification of the body under the study as well as the characteristic of the injuries which are already traumatic or pathological. Si, de tal manera que si fue un delito, un crimen, un asesinato, el delincuente, el culpable, queda en libertad con el riesgo para la sociedad de que él continúe matando gente. Many people have died and have ended up in the most places that we do not know of. And he is helping them whether it is a criminal, whether it is a normal person, anyone he helps them. Es por eso que por medio de, este, de esta técnica buscamos recuperar el aspecto más natural de esos cuerpos para tratar de recuperar las características que nos permitan identificarlo y a la vez de, de, de determinar, poder encontrar las lesiones que pudieron causar la muerte y poder saber si fue una muerte por alguna enfermedad natural o fue una muerte violenta eh, que se haya que perseguir un delito. He is an, he is an expert at this technique as he has developed it uh, years ago and he does it very well and After doing this technique, all the alterations caused to the dead body, they, he regains the, the soft tissues in all the dead bodies. And to identify it in a very inevitable and successful way, and, he, and helping the families that have lost their dead ones or they, those who are not identified in the morgues. ¿Puedes cambiar la que sigue, por favor? Tú tienes el control de esta. ¿La puedes cambiar? Muy bien. Sí. Aquí vemos lo que se puede recuperar en esos casos. El color de la piel. Características de la cara, de la boca, de la nariz manchas en la piel que se conocen como hemangiomas y todo esto que les describo aquí de tal manera que el cuerpo que estaba putrefacto y muy cambiado físicamente se recupera lo más próximo a lo natural y nos permite ver esto entre ello también nos permitirá ver las lesiones ahorita las vamos a ver sí by this uh, by the technique that he developed the various physical characteristics like the color of the skin, the spots on the skin, the tattoos, the scars, stretch marks, 
and piercings all that can be used for the identification of any cadaver that is either putrefied or mummified Ahorita vamos a ver que tanto en el cadáver momificado como el putrefacto no se pueden apreciar todas estas características. The mummified, una vez procesado, se pueden volver a ver muy claramente. ¿Sí? The mummified bodies or the putrefied bodies do not have these physical characteristics that helps us to identify that person. Cambia la que sigue, por favor. Bueno, vamos a ver que también, ya lo había mencionado, con la putrefacción y la momificación, no podemos distinguir las lesiones que pudieron haber causado la muerte. Ya sean estas lesiones traumáticas o provocadas por un tercero o por otra persona o sean lesiones provocadas por alguna enfermedad como pudiera ser cáncer o pudiera ser cualquier otra enfermedad que provocara la muerte de manera natural, pero que no se puede determinar en la autopsia por esos cambios de estos fenómenos cadavéricos, ¿sí? Sí. Uh, all the dead bodies, they lose the physical characteristic and the injuries and other the soft tissues that may lead to a probable cause of death, the possible vulnerating agent that caused them or the cause of death and even giving an idea of the victim position when he died, he or she died. La cambias, por favor. Bueno, si le das más, ¿otro? ¿Otro? Ok. Bueno, vamos a ver que con estos procedimientos podemos encontrar las lesiones, cuántas lesiones y la antigüedad de esas lesiones, tanto en piel como en músculos. ¿Sí? Sí, tú. So... These are the advantages of the rehydration process that is developed by him. First, it facilitates determining cause of death, the type of death, amount and age of the injuries, both in skin and muscles and in internal organs. Vamos a encontrar a poder recuperar una gran variedad de lesiones que están descritas aquí. También nos permite ver que no hay lesiones traumáticas y de esa manera, al hacer la autopsia, procedemos a buscar si hay lesiones patológicas, o sea, por una enfermedad natural. ¿Sí? The, the dead body, at the, the dead body can, he or she can be ill at the time of death. So this process helps us to identify the disease that he was he had while he, while he or she was dying or he died la que sigue por favor the second uh, rehydration advantage is it allows us to observe burnt cutting blunt puncture pun puncture wounds bruise, bruising minor burns, friction, torture, and all these characteristics. It also makes it possible to accurately determine the absence of traumatic injuries, and if so, the presence of pathological injuries that may have caused a natural death. Muy bien. ¿Ya puedes cambiar? Sí. Ah, permíteme acceder a, a, a mis imágenes. Sí, te puede compartir la pantalla. Sí.
Este es un cuerpo de una víctima de feminicidio. No, no, no ve la tus plantada en eso. ¿No estás viéndola? No. ¿Qué pasaría? Permíteme. I request the participants to please hold on. There is a technical. Si me escuchas. There is a technical error in sharing the screen. Me puedes me puedes ver mi imagen de, la, del video. Uh, yo no puedo ver tu uh, presentación. Se salió. Voy a tener que reiniciar, yo creo. No sé qué es lo que pasó. Cuando cambiamos de imagen. Me voy, a, me voy a salir para reiniciar porque no puedo recuperarla. Me puedes escuchar tú, pero no puedo acceder a la presa. A, 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 a compartir mi pantalla. No puedo acceder a la, a la aplicación. Open the presentation and then come back to the Zoom and... Compartir la pantalla para el PowerPoint. Voy a, voy, me voy a salir y vuelvo a entrar, ¿eh? Sí. Sí. ¿Ya me puedes ver? ¿Ya la puedes ver? Sí. ¿Ya se ve? Varga. Sí, sí. Muy bien. Este es un cuerpo de una víctima de feminicidio. This is a victim of feminicide. Encontraron su cuerpo completamente desnuda, sin nada de ropa, en el desierto. He discovered this dead body in the desert, completely naked, with no clothes, with no clothes on. Se, es, se estimó que tenía entre un año y medio y dos años de muerta. This body was recovered after one and a half month, approximately two months after the death. Esta es una imagen de cuando recién ingresó a la morgue. This is the image of the dead body when it came to the morgue. Su causa de muerte era muy clara. No había que buscar la causa de muerte. Su cráneo estaba destrozado por golpes. The apparent cause of death could not be de determined by him as the, cr the cranial cavity was completely destroyed. 
pero después de ocho meses no la habían identificado. Even after eight months, he wasn't able to identify who this person was. Por eso se me pidió que se procesara ese cuerpo para rehidratarlo y, y recuperar características útiles para identificarla. No physical characteristic to identify this dead body was available as this was a mummified body that came to the morgue. Aquí vemos un acercamiento de su cara. This is the image of the skull of the dead body. Y no podemos ver ninguna característica que nos sirva para identificarla más que solamente sus dientes. No other characteristic useful for the identification that we use for the identification of the, of the dead body was available on the skull except the teeth. Y aunque se había obtenido el, el perfil genético de ella, no coincidía en edad y estatura y otras características con mujeres que eran buscadas en esta región. There was no record of, of this dead body's age or missing report or, or any detail of this dead body. Aquí es una frontera con Estados Unidos y es un paso de mucha gente que intenta emigrar hacia Estados Unidos, tanto de México como de Centroamérica, Sudamérica e inclusive ha habido ciudadanos de la India que se vienen a Ciudad Juárez para intentar cruzar a Estados Unidos de manera ilegal. Many of the dead bodies are found near the border of the U United States and Mexico and many of the uh, dead bodies are brought to the Juarez city of Mexico for the identification. Es, ahí está, el, eh, no existía en ese tiempo, este es un caso de 2008, no teníamos un laboratorio para ellos, se trabajaba en una bodega. This is a case of 2008 and at that time Dr. Alejandro did not have his office to work on, so he went to the morgue to perform the, his process. Aquí es el, el día que se colocó ese cuerpo en la tina especial para eso, en los químicos que se utilizan para, re, para rehidratar. The dead body was immersed in a chemical water that was developed and researched back then by Dr. Alejandro. Y estos son resultados a los tres días de estar en la solución. After immersion of the dead body in the chemical water, after three weeks, this is the image of the body after three weeks of immersion in it. El color verde de su piel es un error en la fotografía. The color of the skin is in direct contradiction to the photo that was uh, taken just before the process. En este rostro, después de tres días, en este rostro que estaba irreconocible por la momificación, a los tres días ya podemos ver esto, que señalo con el cursor, que es un tatuaje en los labios, muy característico entre la gente en, en América Latina. As this dead body was found in a, putre, in a mummified stage, he was not able to identify this, but after, three, after immersing this body in three weeks into the chemical water, he was able to get a identifica, uh, identification characteristic that the dead body's lips were full of tattoo And that is, an that is an important identification feature for the victims. Podemos ver también sus, sus características faciales, su rostro, la forma de su rostro, su nariz, sus labios, 
en sí ya se ve muy diferente su cara a como estaba momificada. All the facial recognition uh, characteristics were recovered after immersing it into the chemical water. So it is, it became easier to identify this dead body. Aquí vemos esta imagen. Se puede apreciar una cicatriz y se puede apreciar el tatuaje, el tatú. Y esta son equimosis por los golpes, por los traumatismos. On the left side of the skull that was found uh, after immersion into the chemical water, equimosis and the, the tattoo that were present on the body were seen. Esta es una cicatriz en la parte superior de su ojo izquierdo. Bastante, es mide una pulgada y era de bordes muy gruesos. Era muy notoria, muy visible. The scar is clearly visible on the body after the immersion of three weeks. Estos son... Equimosis por golpes, por traumatismos en sus piernas. This is the equimosis that is accumulated on the feet of the victim. Fue, fue muy golpeada, agredida físicamente muy fuerte. This equimosis reveals that this, that, uh, this person was, and it was the victim of the, of the aggressive sexual assault. En la otra pierna, más equimosis. Y esto es por en la putrefacción. The, you can see the putrefaction on the kneecap and around the kneecaps. Sus manos se recuperan completamente y se pueden lograr impresiones de, de su, para obtener huellas dactilares. The hand of the victim was fully recovered and fully rehydrated after this process. And the fingerprints were also recovered. So this helped in identifying the victim. Se, con las fotografías que se toman, se realiza esto, que es un dibujo forense a mano. Y este es con un software que se llama Caramex, que significa la cara del mexicano. These two sketches were made by the Mexican police. Esto se publica en la televisión y en, la, en los periódicos, en las noticias, para ver si alguien la logra identificar. These posters were given in the magazines, news, and the newspapers of Mexico if, uh, if anyone identified them. De hecho, ella fue identificada gracias a estas imágenes que fueron difundidas por una, por una televisora a nivel nacional. This was done on a national level after the identification. Vamos a ver los órganos internos del cadáver cuando está momificada. We are now going to see the internal organs after the rehydration of the dead body. Esta imagen es de cuando se hizo la autopsia, cuando llegó el cuerpo a la morgue. This is the image of the dead body on which Dr. Alejandro performed the autopsy after coming it in the morgue. Los órganos internos también se deshidratan, se momifican y están en esta pequeña cap, en este pequeño paquete. The internal organs were mummified due to the heavy heat in the desert that the body was found in. No se pueden distinguir ni por forma ni color. No color. Uh, the color was discolored. The body was discolored. Tampoco se podría ver si ahí hay lesiones que pudieron causar la muerte. There was no person that could identify him or her. 
Esta es la cabeza, aquí está el, el, el parte de la cabeza, es acá la cabeza, y este es el cuello, y no podemos ver si hay lesiones. This is the image of the skull from the uh, lower side of the skull. Y el cuello, esta región. Sí, this is the neck part after the autopsy. No se ven lesiones. There were no lesions present on their neck. Pero ya una vez que se rehidrata, aquí podemos ver que esto es parte interna del cuello, la laringe, y podemos ver que se ve rojo, pero no es una lesión de la muerte, es una enfermedad que ella traía y una inflamación por infección. There was no inflammation or infection found inside the neck or the laryngopharyngeal cavity. Y aquí podemos ver los órganos internos del abdomen rehidratados. Este es el intestino grueso, intestino delgado y este es el hígado. This is this this is the image this is the image of the internal organs of the abdomen. So this is the small intestine, large intestine and the lungs. Y esto que vemos aquí es sangre, que también es un tejido y también se rehidrata. You can see the bl blood in and around small and large intestine. Aquí podemos ver sus genitales externos. This is the image of the external genitalia of the female. Si vemos en sus piernas, hay muchas equimosis. There is a lot of ecchymosis deposited on the thigh of the women, dead body. Pero en sus genitales externos no hay equimosis, no hay escoriaciones y no hay desgarres. There were several uh, injuries which was seen after the immersion in, in the chemical water. Al no haber lesiones en sus genitales externos, podemos estar seguros que no fue agredida sexualmente. He was, after this, he was sure that this was, uh, the dead body was a victim of the aggravated sexual assault. Este es el corazón ya rehidratado. This is the heart of the dead body. Arteria aorta. Aorta artery. Es un riñón. This is the riñón. Y este es el útero o matriz. This is the urinary bladder. Se abre y se verifica que no estaba ella eh, este, embarazada, no estaba preñada. You can see that it has a clear lesion on it. Su estómago se abre y se verifica si hay contenido alimenticio. This is the image of the stretched uh, soft tissues after the rehydration. Se recupera si lo había. That También se rehidrata. Yes. Se, se, se retiran los órganos internos y se observa la parte interna de la espalda. The internal organs were completely pale. Y podemos ver, estas son las costillas, los huesos cos y los músculos entre las costillas y se ven severas equimosis. There was a huge amount of equimosis deposited on the internal organs. Este es otro caso. This is the second case. Es una piel que se encontró así, desprendida del cuerpo. No, no había 
se encontraron los huesos, pero ya no había órganos internos ni músculos. Estaban solo los huesos y, el, y la piel así casi completa. The skin alone was found by the residents of the city with no dead body or no, no internal organs in it. Ahí está, es donde se pusieron a rehidratar. This is the tub that contains the chemical water and the chemical formula developed by him. Y así es como quedó la piel. This is the image after, uh, of the skin after the rehydration. Esta parte que estoy señalando con el cursor es la cara. This is the face after the rehydration. Su boca. The mouth. La nariz. The nasal cavity. Un ojo. The eyes. Su oreja. The ear. Pero observen esto. You can see the tattoo. Este tatuaje es un corazón con una flecha atravesada. This is a tattoo of a heart that was done by the victim. Con unas letras. See, it has an initial B and I, the Y in between represents and why why that means e and it means and in english esta letra nos per, este tatuaje nos permitió identificarlo perfectamente a este joven this tattoo were, after finding this tattoo we were sure that this dead body is of a young woman or man porque cuando él desapareció cuatro años atrás, de cuando encontraron su cuerpo, su piel y sus huesos, la esposa hizo el reporte de desaparición. This is usually done before the age of 40. Y posteriormente cuando se encontró esto y viendo que ya había este, eh, la esposa había descrito este tatuaje, se le pidió que acudiera a, a, a identificar el tatuaje, lo pudo identificar y ya posteriormente se hizo la prueba de genética del joven con sus papás. The victim had this tattoo on the on her body that led him that led doctor to successful identification of the victim. Este es un cuerpo que se encontró en avanzado estado de descomposición. This is a dead body found at very large amount in Argentina, in Mexico. Es un hombre muy grande de estatura, medía aproximadamente más de dos metros, o sea, arriba de seis pies. This dead body had tattoos all over this, all over his body that spans across two meters. Si podemos ver sus piernas. You can see the negras. This is black. Pensábamos que era una persona de raza negra. This was a black person, a Latin person. Este es su cara. This is the face of the body. La nariz y la boca. The nose and the mouth. Esta imagen ya es en la morgue, ya que se limpió y se le quitó la ropa. This photo was taken at the morgue after taking uh, out the clothes. Después de que él ingresó, a los tres meses me pidieron que lo procesara para recuperar características de identificación porque nadie lo identificaba, no coincidía con su, esta, su estatura con las 
personas de su rango de edad que andaban buscando otras personas. This de dead body had tattoos all over his body and his body was black. So it was very difficult for him and the other technicians to identify this person. Y estos ya son cambios a los tres días dentro de la solución química. After immersing the dead body into the chemical water for three days, this is how the dead body looks. A los cinco días ya está completamente revertida la putrefacción. After five days, the putrefaction process is complete and the body looks like this. Y aquí podemos ver que ya se ven sus características faciales. This revealed his facial characteristic, which was not revealed, which was not uh, visible earlier. Podemos ver el fre de frente la forma de su nariz, su, la forma de su mentón y su oreja la cual presenta un defecto. He had uh, a defect on his ears. Es de otra imagen del rostro. Another image of the dead body. Y se logra identificar y es él. After identification, we came to know that this was the person who died. Es un ciudadano norteamericano. This was a suicide that was, that was in the North America. El cual cruzó a Ciudad Juárez, México, a hacer ejercicio. He came to Ciudad Juárez for many times. Y murió ahí este, a consecuencia de un infarto en el corazón. He had a fracture. He had a fracture in his heart. Pero la familia creía que lo habían matado, que a él le habían quitado la vida con violencia. His family believed that he was dead long ago, so they did not find him. No nos creían que él había muerto de una enfermedad del corazón. They believed that uh, he had died of the heart disease. Reclamaron su cuerpo y se lo llevaron a Estados Unidos para que allá le hicieran una segunda autopsia. The body was sent to America for the second autopsy. El patólogo de Estados Unidos dio el mismo diagnóstico de causa de muerte, infarto del corazón. The cause of death determined by the second autopsy was the fracture to the heart. Aquí vemos que no hay ningún parecido de él a como se encontró. You can see the dead body that this earlier was a black body, but after the rehydration, it came to know that this wasn't a dead, black dead body, it was a white one. Aquí ya podemos ver que sí se empieza a aparecer. Se empieza a ver similitudes. You can compare the facial characteristics of the rehydrated body and the image of the person. Y aquí vemos ya a los cinco días cuando se retiró el cuerpo del, de los químicos. This was done after five days of complete rehydration of the body. Se hizo, se hizo el mismo trabajo que mostré hace rato, los retratos de el dibujo forense y el, el, la computadora de Caramex y con eso lo identificó la familia. This uh, was uh, a sketch was also prepared after the rehydration of the body with the help of computer softwares and it gave a positive search for this man. So this is how he was identified. 
la familia lo estaba buscando en Estados Unidos. Nunca creyeron que él estuviera en México. This is all done in his office in the Mexico. Habían visto en las noticias, en la televisión, que se había encontrado un cuerpo de una persona que tenía esa estatura de más de seis pies de alto, pero creían que era de raza negra. Nunca pensaron que fuera su padre. The dead body was declined by his father. Este es un caso que, trabe, que trabajé en el sur de México, muy lejos de donde yo vivo. This was the dead body found at the outskirts of the Mexico City. Es una víctima de feminicidio. He is a victim of the feminicide. Ella, cuando encontraron ese cuerpo, ella tenía 38 días desaparecida. When they found this body, it came to his knowledge that this body was missing for three months, three and a half months. Esta imagen es cuando ingresó a la morgue en ese lugar. This image is taken at the morgue at his place. Animales depredadores le comieron todo el tejido de la cara y de la y de su cabeza. You you cannot identify the facial characteristics of this body. La causa de la muerte estaba muy clara, era asfixia por estrangulamiento. The cause of death is completely uh, is definitely asphyxia era una joven de 19 años and this dead body is uh, of a 19 years young era fácil de identificarla it was very easy to identify this por su estatura because of the tattoos present on the body. Características dentales. The dental characteristics. Además de que no había más mujeres desaparecidas en esa ciudad. And this was uh, a very well known person. The Pudieron determinar la causa de muerte, pero no encontraron muchas lesiones. In the initial examination, he did not find any lesions on the body. El cuerpo estaba en putrefacción. The dead body has, putre, has putrefied. Los médicos de ahí, de esa ciudad, me dijeron que estas señales marcaban las lesiones que ella presentaba. The arrows that you see is the putrefied stage of the various parts on the various parts of the body. Podemos ver que aquí en la región de sus senos, de sus pechos, no hay lesiones que marquen. There are separate lesions on the both side of the shoulders. Había solamente una mujer reportada desaparecida desde ese tiempo, 38 días. This, uh, the missing report of this person was filed by a woman three, three months back. No había más mujeres desaparecidas. But the women disappeared and no one could find it. Era fácil creer que era la joven que habían reportado desaparecida, de nombre Jocelyn. Then it was clear that this dead body was of a young woman and her name was Hovelin. Pero la familia no aceptaba que ese cuerpo era ella. But the family did not accept the dead body that, that Dr. Alejandro identified. Y pidieron que yo interviniera. 
and this ended up in the morgue. Estas imágenes son de cuando ella ingresó y eh, este en el mes de febrero de en febrero en el mes de febrero fue cuando encontraron su cuerpo. The dead body was found in the month of February. La familia no aceptaba que era ella y no, se negaban a recoger el cuerpo. The, as the family did not accept it, it was brought back to the morgue. Si observamos aquí están sus pechos o sus senos y no vemos lesiones. There were lesions on the breast of the women. La familia quería que yo recuperara sus características faciales por medio de la reversión de putrefacción, pero no hay tejido. The facial characteristics were recovered after the rehydration of the dead body. Entonces pidieron que si podía yo rehidratar el área de sus senos donde ella tenía características muy individualizantes que la hacían única. The, the physical characteristic are individual to each and every part of the body that helped identify this person. No pudieron determinar si había sido agredida violentamente por, de, por vía vaginal ni anal. No se pudo determinar si fue violada. By the external examination of the dead body, it was uh, ruled that this body was a part of the aggravated sexual assault. Por el avanzado estado de descomposición. And the composition can be seen by the arrows. A ella la encontraron en febrero y, a, y la familia no aceptaba que era ella hasta abril que fui yo a trabajar allá. As the family did not accept uh, this body, he worked on this to reveal more ca characteristic and give them proof that this is the same person of your family. Su cuerpo lo tuvieron en un congelador. This is the side image after the after the autopsy. En un refrigerador. Estaba en un refrigerador. This was put it in the refrigerator. El refrigerador la momificó. So the daddy, so the body was mummified. Por el frío excesivo. Because of the excessive cold. La familia quería ver si aquí aparecía un lunar que ella tenía. The family wanted to identify the body by the marks present on the body. Y también tenía pezones supernumerarios, pezones extras abajo de sus senos. So he started working on it on individual parts. Por eso decidimos poner ambos tejidos de los sus pechos hasta el abdomen. Esto es lo que se recortó. This is the cut part of the abdomen. Se pusieron en la, en la solución las dos partes de tejido. Este es el seno derecho y este es el seno o pecho izquierdo. After the rehydration, these two body parts could be joined and so it could be assigned to the dead body. They were certain of it. Los puse en la solución para recuperar el aspecto más natural de los tejidos y buscar el lunar y los pezones supernumerarios. The family was well, the family of the dead body was looking for uh, for her uh, from many time since February, but they could not find her. 
Cuando lo saco de la solución, me encuentro con esto que fue una sorpresa. After immersing the body into the chemicals, he was surprised. Le fue cortada su areola y su pezón. There was a cut in the areolar cavity. Y aquí estos son equimosis. You can see the ecchymosis deposited ar around the alveolar cavity. Aquí vemos más ecchymosis. M more ecchymosis was seen. Lo cual indica que hay muchos golpes. It was un... Muchos traumatismo. Yes, it, it is a result of the trauma that the body received before the death. Cuando vieron que pudimos recuperar los traumatismos, me pidieron que si podíamos rehidratar sus genitales externos para ver si podíamos determinar si hubo agresión sexual. For the perfect identification, he uses a method to look at the genitalia of a person to confirm that he was he or she was a, involved in a sexual uh, a sexual assault. Esta es la imagen de sus genitales externos una vez que se hizo la disección. This is the image of the genitalia of the body after the dissection. Y aquí están ya revertida la putrefacción. It had undergone the putrefication process. Podemos ver desgarres y equimosis alrededor de su vulva. You can see the equimosis around the vulva of the women. La vagina. Around her vag vagina also. Equimosis muy antiguas. Equimosis was largely spread. De más de 15 días. And it, and he thinks that it, the sexual assault was committed for at least five days on her. Muy repetidas, ya que había equimosis rojas, moradas, negras, verdes y amarillas. This woman was a black woman. Había equimosis rojas. The equimosis is usually red. Había equimosis moradas. But the equimosis here turned black. Equimosis verdes. Equimosis in blue. Greens. Y equimosis yellow. And the uh, yellow equimosis. Lo cual indica que ella estuvo siendo agredida sexualmente durante un largo tiempo. These type of echimosis in different colors are a positive identification of the sec of an aggravated sexual assault. Esta es la región de su ano, el ano, el has. This is a part of the body that you can see. Y hay desgarres muy severos, muy fuertes. The blow to it was very strong. Podemos ver más desgarres muy fuertes y mucha equimosis. There is a lot of equimosis deposit on this part. Hay una persona que fue detenida se demostró que él la violó y la mató, que la tuvo cautiva 30, 30, 30 días de los 38 que ella estuvo desaparecida. It was ruled that, uh, after the examination, it was ruled that this body was sexually aggravated and then dumped 30 days before. Él... 
está en la cárcel y va a durar 70 años. The person who did this is in the jail and he was sentenced for 70 years. Este, este señor iba a ser enviado ya a fosa común como no identificado. This was a dead body that he could not identify. A él se le procesó para un documental que hicieron para Discovery Channel. As you can see, this body is completely mummified. No vemos nada de características para poderlo identificar. There was no physical characteristic to identify who this victim was. Aquí hay una lesión que ahorita la van a ver, ya rehidratada. There is a lesion present on the topmost part of the skull. Observen su cara. And on the face also. Su cuerpo. On the body also. A los tres días en, en, en los químicos empieza a haber cambios. After putting the dead body in the chemical water for three days, it looks like this. A los cinco días esto es lo que se logra. And after five days, the, the body looks like this. Se puede ver ya su cara como era. The skull and the lesion were, was clearly visible after the rehydration. Acá está la herida que les mostraba hace rato. The hair which was earlier not clearly visible on the skull was also visible after the rehydration process. Y aparecen tatuajes. There are some of the tattoos that were found after the rehydration process. Echimosis. And the echimosis also. Más tatuajes. More tattoos were later recovered. De muy mala calidad, muy mal realizados. And it was a very, very terrible death. Tatuajes que se hacen en la prisión, en la cárcel. These, the type of tattoos that were present on the body were a clear representation that these, that he was the person from the prison. Estas son cicatrices de heridas que ellos se hacen solos en la prisión ante la falta de droga. This is the image of the feet after the rehydration. Una equimosis muy severa. This is a severe equimosis. La parte interna de eso por la fractura del hueso húmero. It was present on the inside of the side part of the body. Pero esta equimosis tan grande. The equimosis is so large. Nos indica que él no murió rápido. That the person could not have died very fast. Y son lesiones que compatibles con un accidente automovilístico. The this type of uh, injury was was determined to be a automobile accident by Dr. Cardenas. En 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 la autopsia cuando él ingresó en muy avanzado estado de descomposición se pudieron determinar algunas lesiones, pero no 
no se indicaron esas equimosis. By the, in, by the external uh, examination before the rehydration process, there was no equimosis seen, so it was difficult to identify this. Ni estas ni otras que ahorita vamos a ver más fuertes. And it was a, after the rehydration process, it was revealed that it had faced a severe trauma injury. Esta es su espalda y podemos ver la marca de las llantas de un automóvil. The back part of the rehydrated body suggests that he was sitting in a automobile. El automóvil lo impactó y lo lanzó lejos. And the automobile somehow got into accident and he was then dead. Pero posteriormente y deliberadamente a propósito, o sea, con la intención, regresaron de reversa, le volvieron a dar hacia enfrente y volvieron a dar de reversa. The back part of the seat was imprinted on the dead body during the time of death. Y él aún así no murió pronto. Estas equimosis señalan que él sobrevivió al min mínimo 20 minutos después del accidente. He was not dead during the... He was not dead as the accident happened. He lived for approximately 20 minutes. Como les había comentado... Antes no había un laboratorio, trabajaba en las bodegas. This is the lab laboratory in which he works on the dead bodies. Este es el laboratorio ahora, actualmente. This is his workplace where the, he rehydrates the dead bodies. Esta las tiene, hizo la traducción usted. Si la tiene traducida. Sí. In conclusion, this is a useful method for obtaining identification characteristics and support for the forensic physician in the diagnosis of the cause of death, which in some occasions in the mortgage or putrefaction cavities is difficult from sebation and undetermined death. Also, this is pretty reliable, simple, easy, safe, and fast process that is developed by Dr. Cardenas. There is no legal or ethical reason for not carrying this out. And yes, many want to carry it carry this out among others the interest of justice and in the humanitarian sense to help families receive the bodies of the faithful loved beings no matter the circumstances in which the facts happen that is no matter whether he was a criminal or not he helps this helps these types of person with his technique con eso terminamos sí Thank you very much for your kind attention. Agradezco mucho la invitación, el honor de poder compartir con ustedes mi trabajo. Sí, we are very happy to have you, sir. Thank you for your valuable time and knowledge and enlightening us with the technique that was not previously available in India. Muchas gracias. No sé, no sé si tengan alguna pregunta que deseen hacer. No, no pregunta. Bueno, pues muchas gracias. Muchas gracias por su valioso tiempo y por compartir su conocimiento con nosotros. Estoy seguro de que la gente de la India ha aprendido mucho de ti. Esperamos más in, 
inventos y interacciones con usted en el futuro. Gracias. Adiós. Thank you so much sir, uh, for sparing your valuable time to us. Thank you. Over to you, Ananya. Yes. Create and executive producer of Forensic File Documentary. Mr. Do Paul Darling, professional education began at the age of 17 when he was offered a scholarship to the prestigious Juilliard School in New York City to study and to become a musician in symphony orchestra. He performed under such names as Leonard Bernstein, Leonard Galkin, James Conlin, Sixten uh, Erling at the country, uh, Carnegie Hall with the world famous jazz pianist Dave Rubin. For spending money, he also worked in the recording studio for future films and television soundtracks. So the golden age for its drama division had by which had his career. Paul's fellow students included Robin Williams, Manny, David Ogden, uh, Ogden Sear, Christopher Reeve, Kelsey Grammer, William Hurt, Patty Lepone, among others. By the time Paul graduated in 1976 with a master's degree in music, he had already turned his attention to television, securing a job with a small production company in New York City and Connecticut, headed by a, another fellow student, composer, Avika, uh, uh, Akiva Talmi. In 1981, Paul was working as a producer at public television health and medical specials. His production of open heart surgery Hosted by friend David Stair, then in role of Winchester in the Fred TV series Man, aired by PBS station in USA, and won the Chicago, Austin, and New York International Film Festival Award, as well as Cliff Howard Award for Outstanding Public Journalism. Paul left public television in 1985 and founded MedStar Television, which produced only science and medical programming. Clients including HBO, the Discovery Channel, Syndication, and in 1996, was a co-creator with Gary Lico of Medical Detectors on TLC, now Forensic Files. Paul was executive producer and writer of all 400 original episodes. Forensic File has the distinction of being the first program having aired first on cable network TLC and 4TV and then broadcast network in NBC in 2002. Forensic Files 2 is the newer version of the series picking up where the original 400 programs left off, showcasing the latest of what Forensic Files can offer. It is a great honor to have you amongst us, sir. Forensic Files have helped a lot of us to gain new knowledge and interest in Forensic Science. Forensic Files have inspired many people to explore the world of forensics. I, on behalf of Legal Desire team, welcome you to the third international virtual conference on contemporary progression in forensic science. Sir, sir, before we begin, I request you to address our audience who are watching us live on the YouTube channel. Hello, sir, can you hear me? Yes, you're asking me if, yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir, go ahead. Sir, sir before we begin, sir, I would uh, request you to address our audience who are watching us live on the YouTube channel. Sorry, I couldn't hear that. What did you ask me? 
thank you guys our audience for watching us live on our youtube chat could you repeat that for me i'm having trouble hearing your audio uh, hello uh, can you hear me yes yes uh, so sir before we begin the session uh, we request that you should, uh, you can address our audience who are watching us live on youtube channel could could you could you repeat that i'm having trouble hearing your audio uh, so you can start your uh, address oh okay yeah. um We started Forensic Files or Medical Detectives in 1996 um, because largely the viewers knew nothing about forensics and uh, f f science was increasingly a part of uh, the, the crime uh, uh, trials that were going on in the United States. And um, we decided to do that without sounding like a science show on television, which without talking down to viewers, um, treating the viewers like they were smart. Actually, the average viewer in, te in television is very smart, regardless of whether they went to college or not. Um, for example, my mother and father never went to college, but they were smart people. They would have been fine as jurors in a trial. Um, so, uh, the, the question, question was, how can we talk to these to the viewers and explain to them science in a simple way without talking down to them, treating them like smart people because they are. You know, there's never been a more sophisticated audience in the history of the world ever. The average TV viewer has seen hundreds, if not thousands of TV shows, hundreds of movies, specials, news from all over the world. In, in the palm of their hand, they can watch any TV show they want, any movie they want at any time, okay? Uh, they, they can read any magazine they want. They can read any newspaper they want. They can listen to every radio show that they want across the country, okay? This is a very, very sophisticated audience. The, the average viewer can spot a phony from 300 yards away, okay? They've, they're so sophisticated, um, like in a movie, if they see a plot not working, if they see a, a, a subplot not working, they pick that up. They're very, very smart. They're very, very sophisticated. Um, so can you imagine trying to educate or even entertain um, that type of audience? Can you imagine that? Um, it's hard. That's why it's hard to have a hit TV show. So, so how do you do that? Fortunately, the guy I produced the show with, a man named Vince Sherry, and I were both uh, learning disabled in school as children. And uh, we knew what it was like to be treated like we were dumb. Those were the days before learning dis disabled uh, kids uh, were treated, identified. There was no treatment for those. We, there was no Ritalin. There was none of that. Um, and, and so we knew how that was like. We didn't like it. We resented it. And we weren't going to treat the viewers that way. We were going to treat them as smart individuals and, and um, tell the stories in, in a way they could understand without talking down to them. And I think that's what Forensic Files has done the whole time. Uh, it's to, it, 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 without, without using big words too, um, because that offends people. Uh, uh, we, we have a joke in our office, um, you know, do you understand it to the producers? If we, if we didn't understand it, the viewers weren't gonna understand it. And, um, and the viewers get it. You know, they understand luminol now, they understand mitochondrial DNA, they understand that, they get it. Um, they could, maybe they couldn't teach a college course in it, uh, but they get it. Uh, the average juror today, uh, very, very sophisticated. Um, and I think well, Forensic Files can take some credit for that. Um, we've had trials here in the United States where the prosecutors and defense attorneys have asked the, the pr prospective jurors 
have you seen forensic files? Uh, sometimes the defense lawyers don't want to have viewers who watch forensic files. Uh, sometimes they do. Okay, it's it's fascinating. Um, so uh, the other thing we did was um, the, the TV show had a lot of the production values of feature films. The music is is always um, composed uh, like a movie. The show is done and then sent out to a composer, just like a movie. Then it's composed and, and put together um, and then it airs, just like a movie. So, because viewers are used to that. They're used to big high production value. And so you can't get away with just airing some music, some lousy music underneath the, the, the thing. If you listen to the, the, the last block of the sh every show, you know, where Peter Thomas revs it up and, and, and explains the crime, um, the music plays along with that. Um, and that was important. Um, the show always took a point of view. Uh, the point of view was always the prosecutor. Why? Because, uh, there was a conviction, okay? Sometimes we would try to shoot, try to shoot the defense's position. That was hard and I'll tell you why. We used to call it shooting the lie. It's one thing when a defense lawyer gets up and talks about my client, you know, um, you know, he says, that a bad guy came in and, and, and killed my family and, and did all this stuff. And this is how it happened. Uh, well, it's fine to say that to the jury, but if you try to shoot that, you begin to see immediately just how galactically stupid it was. And there was no chance of that happening. And we're trying to be fair about it and, and, and let the viewer make a decision. But at some point, uh, that's difficult, uh, if not impossible. Having said that, there are times when we try to shoot the, the crime the way the prosecutor says, and it doesn't work either. Okay, we, we get an actor um, or an actress, five foot four, the same size as the woman accused of murder, uh, murdering her husband. We get a, a, an actor six foot two, the size of her husband, two, 250 pounds. And we say, that, like the prosecutor, uh, she lifts him up and puts him in the back of this van. There's no way. She, uh, she could have had two friends with her and they, they couldn't have picked up this, this, this guy and put him in the back. And I would call the prosecutor and I say, that didn't happen that way, did it? No, no, it didn't. No. What, what, what happened? Uh, well, the, the perpetrator's father came over and helped her throw the body in the back of the truck. I said, well, why didn't you arrest him too? Well, we didn't have enough evidence about it with him and um, we didn't want to create reasonable doubt for the jury. Um, we left that out. Okay, now what do we show? Uh, and that happened a lot, actually. Um, we found out, you know, a lot of things that the public didn't know. They thought a lot of that stuff was told to us off the records, like, now what? You know, uh, uh, now, now we can't use that. Um, you know, what are we going to do? Have the cameraman walk into the shot and help the body? I mean, what, yeah, what, what are we going to do? So there were things that we had to learn how to do. Uh, there was no other type of crime show that we could uh, imitate because we were the first ones. Um, I'll tell you what we learned uh, almost right away that we didn't know. Um, Number one, the death penalty is bad. I used to think the death penalty was okay, I, but there are 300 and some people who are on death row 
here in the United States, ready to die, and post-conviction DNA, DNA technology that was developed after they were convicted, was introduced in their, in their defense, and exonerated them. That's 325, I think it is, in the United States. People on death row, exonerated by science that came later. Think about that. You can't tell me that that does not mean that some innocent people prior to that were put to death. Okay, well, we know that because in, in Great Britain, uh, the, I think the very last person executed uh, for a crime, uh, the main witness against him was the real killer. That's, uh, was, uh, that story was told uh, in a very good book and, and two very good movies called Eight, uh, Villington Place. Um, a, a, a tremendous story, but this is what happens. In that case, the, the, the uh, so-called perpetrator, the, the woman's husband confessed. That's the second thing you learn. What you learn is people confess to crimes they don't commit. It happens all the time. In fact, the 325 people who uh, were on death row and uh, for, for crime for murders, all of them confessed. Why? Well, one of the reasons why is they were so afraid that they were going to be convicted, they took a, a plea bargain. So they, they pled guilty to a lesser crime in hopes of a better um, outcome. I know that sounds crazy, but it's not crazy to them. It happens all the time. But if you ask jurors in, in some, many cases whether people confess to a crime they don't commit, they'll say, no, they don't. No, they don't. No. In fact, I was doing a story called the Norfolk Four, a very famous case here in the United States. <clears throat> Four naval seamen confessed to the rape and murder of an 18-year-old girl in Norfolk, Virginia. While I'm doing the show, I get a phone call from a guy in prison, a guy named uh, Omar Ballard. And Omar Ballard said to me, I hear you're doing a show about this case. Uh, you, you, I hear you were looking for my cousin, who was the victim's friend. I said, that's right. He said, I did that crime. I'm the, I'm the killer. I'm in, I'm in prison for life for another crime. I said, and he said, I don't know who those four guys are who confessed. Why did they confess? Yeah, it was me. In fact, it was my semen of the crime scene. And he, and he proceeded to tell me and later write about all kinds of details about this, about the murder. A lot of stuff that was never, never in, the, in the newspapers, okay? Uh, I carried on a one year conversation with him. I said to the prosecutor, do you know this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did his semen match the crime? Yeah, yeah. Were you gonna let the other guys out? No, no, no. Why? Well, not all of the guys in prison recanted, he said. I said, uh, okay, which one didn't recant? And he told me, a guy named Joseph Dick. And, I, and uh, so I contacted Joe Dick, talked to him, um, asked him what happened and make a long story short, he recanted to me. Now that's saying something when somebody recants to a TV producer. And so, uh, and that was a case where one of the uh, investigators admitted to me, off the record, admitted to me that one of the people who confessed to the crime, none of the facts that they gave was accurate. Um, he signed a, he signed a uh, confession, 
the, the uh, investigator went to the autopsy, found out that none of it was true, came back and said to the uh, person accused, hey, you lied to me. You lied to me. Uh, you didn't strangle her. You stabbed her four times or six times with a knife. Uh, you didn't ejaculate on her face. You didn't do any of that. Uh, uh, you didn't hit her in the face with a shoe, like you said, no, none of that. And he said, oh, I didn't? No, okay. Uh, yeah. And, and she changed, uh, they changed the uh, um, confession. They ripped up the first one, time, signed the second one. And I said to the investigator, I said, do you know that's improper? You're trying to, you're supposed to find out what, what they know not educate them about what happened. And by the way, isn't it a little suspicious when they're giving you a story about the, 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 the murder and that's not what happened? But anyway, to make a long story short, <clears throat> the governor of that state, Virginia, the man who later ran with Hillary Clinton as vice presidential candidate, came um, assigned his, uh, saw the special, assigned his, his investigators to look into the case and let the four guys out because of a TV show. Think about that. That's the power of television. If that, if, if we didn't do that case, if had, that had not been on television, if, if the government, uh, governor had not seen it, those people still would be in prison. Those guys were in prison for 10 years as it was. And the day I met the, the, the uh, guys who were in prison um, at a pig roast in North Carolina uh, was the most emotional day of my life. And, frank, and frankly, a very, very emotional day. Um, but that's the power of television. Um, but um, we also did a couple big cases uh, besides the Norfolk Four. We did the JFK assassination for for a, a, a an anniversary a couple many years ago. We also did the Lindbergh baby kidnapping that, that happened in 1932. Tell you something interesting about that. Talking about new technology. Uh, in both cases, uncovered new evidence that they never found in the first investigation, which isn't surprising because the, there's new technology available now that wasn't a, a, a available in 1932, wasn't available in 1963 when they were investigating the uh, John Kennedy assassination. Um, we had 3D animation. We could animate the crime scene and, and watch, look at it in 360. And what you found out is that the, the shot, the, the, the bullet that went into John Kennedy, okay, was spinning after it hit John Kennedy. It went into the governor sideways, proof that it hit something before him, okay? All this nonsense baloney that you hear about you know, uh, the governor was sitting, you know, to the left side and all this other. Thing. Well, well, when you look, when you really look at it, the jumps, jump seats in that uh, limousine weren't directly in front of the president. They were off to the side. When you see, when you put the animation camera in front of it and line it up with the book depository, okay, you see that it's a straight shot. You see that it's a straight shot. Well, 3D animation didn't exist in 1963. Okay, Lindbergh baby kidnapping. The looking looking at it with the new uh, telescopes and microscopes um, found new, even more proof that uh, Bruno Hoffman um, made the um, the ladder uh, from wood in his uh, attic. So uh, uh, this stuff is fascinating. Um, and uh, 
it, it's uh, and I think that's what fascinates people about it. You can learn a little science. They're treated respectfully. The viewers, they're treated uh, like they're smart people. It educates them. Um, they can play along. It's a it's a murder mystery who done it. It was the first show to use um, movie um, who done it uh, fictional techniques in a true crime case in a true story. We didn't do famous cases for the most part. We did uh, regular stories that so the viewers wouldn't know how they turned out. We found out through research that the average viewer watches each episode six times. Think about that. It shocks me even, but um, so uh, it's been it's been a real surprise. But but as I say, we learned a lot um, doing the show. Um, there's some tricks in there if you might notice if you watch carefully. Tricks we invented. Um, sometimes the real killers in the in the episodes because we changed his outfit in, in prison. Okay, we go into the. We go into the jail, we take his prison top off, we put a blue shirt on, we take the bars out of the back and they start talking to, <laughs> describing the victim and they, they, you know, telling us the story and the viewer says to themselves or their, their spouse, well, it's not the husband, he's in the show. Must be somebody else. So they're playing along, playing along. In the last block, you find out that <laughs> there he is in, a, in the prison garb and the bars are behind him and he admits it on, on camera. It's a classic. So, um, so these are the things that TV can do. It's fascinating. It fascinates me even to this day. There, there, are, there are times when it, it gets to me though. I mean, even the, there are, we did a case where um, the killer and his girlfriend went into a bar on a vacation and they decided to play tricks on people. They invited a couple over to their condo, probably to do drugs. And they would say to the couple, oh my goodness, uh, my, my wife's uh, purse is missing. Can you help us find the purse? And the game they were playing is if they found the purse, they would let them live. If they didn't find the purse, they would kill them. Imagine that. Well, anyway, we know that because the night before this murder, that's what happened, but the couple found the purse. The next night, the couple wasn't so lucky. The, the couple didn't find the purse and they kill him. And the killer said to his girlfriend, hey, Go down, get a get a bucket and some water and some uh, detergent, and come back up here so we can clean out the blood. Well, by the time the girlfriend gets up there, he had take chopped the heads off. Was standing in the hot tub with the two heads. The 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 uh, jacuzzi water was blood red, and he was. Uh, doing sexual things with the heads. While we were shooting that recreation, and I'm watching that, and I'm thinking, what? and the heads we had made looked exactly like the two actors uh, and actress, the actors and the actor, actress we had on this thing, and it's like, you know, it's like, what are we, what are, what are we doing here, you know? And then we're discussing how to handle the, you know, the inappropriate things that the guy was doing. And it's like, that one got to me. Um, and how do you describe how, what, how do you describe this to the viewer? I mean, there's no explanation that, that this this guy was. Both of them were crazy. I, 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 what do you say to that? But um, uh, as I say, it's, it's, uh, it's a fascinating business, uh, true crime. The other thing is, you know, if we wrote these stories like fiction, no one would believe them. My favorite all time is the one where uh, the woman 
um, was upset about something, goes to the hospital to talk to her friend who was a nurse, find, meets her doctor there who was working the, in the OR, ER that weekend. And, she, and he says, do you want something to calm yourself down? She was upset about losing a boyfriend. She, he gives her a shot. When she wakes up, she finds that her panties are wet. She's smart enough. And she, this girl's a 19 year old. She's smart enough to take the panties and went to a Planned Parenthood um, office near her and asked to have the panties tested. And in the panties, they found semen. And so she goes to police, they, they arrest the doctor for, for uh, sexual assault, rape. They take the uh, blood from the doctor, doesn't match. Does a match. The woman continues to, to complain that the, the doctor must have had some pull at the lab and this something wrong happened. She complained, complained. So uh, second time the, the police did the uh, test um, and we had on video the person the person nurse going and taking the blood from the arm. You might have seen this one on TV. Uh, and took the blood and, and that, that went to the police lab. Blood didn't match. Okay. The woman, by this time she was beside herself. And, and by this time the doctor's wife was on TV saying this, 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 this whore is, is, is ruining our life and she only wants money and, and why don't the two DNA tests have, have exonerated my husband? I don't know we don't, what, what, what this is all about. Okay. This girl and her, by now, uh, private detective she hired, broke into the doctor's uh, car, stole his chapstick. Chapstick. They took epithelial cells from the chapstick. It matched the semen in the uh, panties. Why? Because the doctor made an incision up here, put a tube down his arm, had his patient's blood in it. And so every time the nurse was taking blood, she was sticking, them, sticking this plastic tube. How do you make that up? How do, you make, how do you make it up that if it wasn't for the persistence of this girl, this 19 year old girl, okay? I would have given up after the first time, right? Certainly I would have given up the second time, but the, but the, but the clincher of the story is that the wife's daughter by her first marriage, okay? The wife who was calling this victim the whore, goes to her mother after the husband is, is, is uh, found out and says, mom, I didn't, I've never told you this. I've been embarrassed. I didn't think you'd believe me. He's been coming into my room every, every Sunday and raping me, giving me a drug and raping me. So this girl not only proves this doctor was a rapist, but saves the wife's daughter from continuing. Think about that. How do you, how do you make this? You know, and I've often said, if there were a forensic hall of fame, this girl would be, this, this high school girl would, would be in, in, in the forensic hall of fame. Why? Persistence, maybe, maybe a belief in science, belief in herself, courage, strength that I don't have. If it were my daughter, I think I would have said to her, hey, you've got to drop this. This is crazy. And so we have stories like this time and time, time again. Uh, investigators who don't give up. There's a, there's a brand new episode uh, in Forensic Files 2 of an uh, unsolved case 
uh, for I think 20, 10 or 15, 20 years. Um, they took a they took a, a speck of uh, uh, it's a blood or semen I forget, but uh, uh, put it into a computer, which by now had millions of DNA profiles to compare it to and pictures. And and by the way, it was a nurse in the forensic lab who knew about this new test, knew about taking this, these, okay, taking these little tiny pieces of DNA and, and, and putting it in this computer that had all these, okay. And the computer spits out a, a picture, okay. And they put it on television and some ladies calls up and said, oh, that's my ex-husband. That's my ex-husband. Okay. From a tiny, tiny speck of uh, DNA. And guess what? It was him. And at the end of the show, I think we showed the two, the computer picture and the real picture of the guy. Amazing, amazing. And I think back, I think back because we did this, we did the first case uh, in forensic files uh, of the first case ever used, criminal case used where it used DNA in, in Great Britain. Um, uh, where they were convinced this, this, this one uh, hospital worker had uh, uh, killed these two girls. Matter of fact, they, they had evidence that he killed the one, he confessed. Um, but they, he, he wouldn't confess to the second murder they were convinced he had done. So the local policeman said, hey, I heard about this DNA. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's try that out. And let's, let's, let's get this guy for the second crime, okay? And they went and had DNA test and the guy in the DNA test said, but he didn't do either one, he's innocent. So people don't realize the very, very first time DNA was used in a criminal case, it exonerated somebody who had confessed. Colin Pitchfork, amazing. Richard Buckland, I think his name was. So, um, and we also did the first case uh, where DNA was used uh, in, a, in an execution in the United States, um, which was interesting. We also did the first uh, DNA dog hair case. I think we did the first DNA cat hair case. Um, we even did one where uh, DNA from a squirrel was, was used. And we had to shoot this, we had to get the squirrel from uh, a, a, an animal trainer who, uh, who uh, trained uh, squirrels for commercials. And uh, uh, I said, and we were shooting this on a, on a golf course and I said, Are you sure the squirrels are gonna run away? No, not gonna run away. I said, how do you know? It just doesn't run away. I said, well, all right. And, and by the way, so every take, the squirrel was getting a little antsy and then would start, okay. And finally, the animal trainer said, we got to take a break. I said, yeah, this thing looks like, looks like it's going to run away. Huh? We can take care of that. I went up into their, to their van and I thought, I'm going to walk up there and see what happens. And they were blowing marijuana smoke in the face of the squirrel. And I said, what are you, what are you doing? It shouldn't be smoke, but what are you doing? I'm not a squirrel defense guy here, but you shouldn't be. Well, they said to me, well, do you want the squirrel right away? I, no, but can't you put a leash on it or something? I mean, this is, anyway, it's been, it's been an education. Um, I've learned a lot. I've, I've, I've enjoyed much of it. I've enjoyed the exoneration cases, especially, I, I've enjoyed those. Um, 
um, the, my number two guy, Vince Sherry, who he and I were both the, the learning disabled kids in, college, in high school and grade school who everyone thought were stupid. Um, and, is, and is the smartest guy I know, by the way, uh, is now the guy who runs Forensic Files 2. Very smart guy, very capable guy, very talented guy. And it's nice to see him succeed. I, I'm the one now who sits around and worries about everything. Um, but uh, that's, that's basically Forensic Files. Have I talked too much? Yes, no, uh, sir. So during the late 90s of the forensics, uh, the forensics was not popular as much as compared to the modern times. So what changes have you observed in over the decade and what new technologies and techniques can be introduced for the betterment of this field in your the, and the investigation in your opinion? Well, the, you know, the more we did, the better we get at it. Uh, the, and the more you learn, we learned about it. Um, you know, uh, one of the things we learned is that um, viewers, when they, the United States started to, TV producers used to be uh, evaluated on the basis of the ratings for a TV show. Now they're evaluated on the ratings of the commercials. I know that sounds crazy. Everything in TV is crazy. The networks are crazy, but, and network executives are crazy because you have to remember they're in the business of selling advertising. We're in the business of producing TV shows, but two different, two different crowds. But anyway, the ratings, the rating system in the United States rates not only the TV show, but rates the ratings of the commercials. And the reason, the way they do that is in the homes that have these these computers that are paid to to, to uh, produce the ratings. While they're waiting, while watching a show, um, it goes to commercials, and the, and the commercials on those units go to fuzz. Bzzz, you see, and if 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 it's not stopped by the viewer in the and it's loud, if it's not stopped by the viewer in the in the room, they know the viewer has left the room go to the bathroom to get a, a drink, whatever. Um, uh, if, if, if they hit the button to stop the, 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 the buzzing um, and start flipping the channels, the computers know that. So the, the, the viewer, the rating systems know who's, who's watching the commercials or at least in the room and who's not, okay? When that first started, uh, forensic files had a drop off rate only 8% of the viewers left during the commercial breaks. And when I first heard that, I thought, oh, that's a lot, you know, except when I found out that the average was 30%. Uh, which tells you that obviously viewers weren't, uh, very, viewers weren't that, in, that enthralled um, and when we're going to the bathroom or, or, you know, getting a drink or not coming back or, or flipping the channel, watching something else. Uh, if you notice in forensic files, uh, there's no tease at the end of each block, you know, coming up next, uh, the butler did it, uh, stay tuned, you know, they took that out. We, I hate that, but anyway. And the second thing we do is when we come back from the commercial, we don't recap. I hated that. And I stopped that even when the network said, oh, you got to recap. I said, why? You, you're, you're rewarding, you're punishing your best viewer. The best viewer has already seen the first block, okay? We'll just come back and start again. No, we got to do it again. No, no, no we're not going to do it. We're not going to do that, okay? Because shows that have recaps, you know, they, they, they take two minutes, okay? But the reason it's bad too is the viewer who goes to the bathroom or gets a drink knows they don't have to come right back. Or they can, they can serve for a while because they know they're not gonna miss anything. Well, we cut out the, the recap. So when they came back, there's no recap. The viewers 
would miss something, they, they can't miss anything, see? Jesus, if they came back late, oh my God, what happened? And forensic files moves along pretty quick, okay? So there's no tease. The viewer doesn't know what's gonna come, happen. Um, and there's no, no recap, you know, as, as you saw, you know, uh, this person was killed and uh, you know, the investigators were looking for some people and all this. Um, you know, and, and so, uh, and that was holding the viewers, okay? Um, so we were, we were doing things, uh, you know, the Forensic Files was my chance to do what I always wanted to do, okay? And, 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 and I was able to do that because I owned the show. Uh, I own the show because the networks uh, weren't paying me what the show cost. And I said, well, all right, uh, okay, if you're going to do that, I want to own it. Same thing happened to Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz and I Love Lucy. Same thing. They said to CBS, well, you're not paying us enough money, let us, let us own it. And, and behind their backs, CBS was laughing at, at, at I Love Lucy and Desi Arnaz. Can you believe those idiots want to own the show? Okay. Well, to this day, I Love Lucy still on. The children are still making money from that. Okay. Well, the same thing happened to me. I said, well, I'm not, then I want to own the show. I, own, I still own 100% of it. But, but it, and it gave me the power to say, I don't want to do, the, I'm not going to do these, these teases. I'm not going to do these recaps. I'm not going to do any of that. It's dumb. Try it my way, you know, and, and of course the networks never admitted, hey, Paul, hey, a producer is right, you know, it, you can't do that, see, God forbid, a producer, it's been an educator, although I have to admit, I, I've, I've worked for, I worked for great uh, network presidents, uh, you know, John Ford and, and Henry Schleif, who's now running investigate discovery ID, investigation discovery, I, this guy I used to work for. Um, uh, he, because after he left Court TV, um, and after Forensic Files left Court TV, D Discovery hi hired him to produce another uh, investigation show, Discovery ID. Interestingly enough, he tells people that he, he had, and he, he admits, that when Forensic Files came to his network, he didn't want to do it. He thought that uh, crime was what they should be doing, not forensics. Then it ends up forensics is his highest rated show. At least he's honest about it. At least he admits it. So I have great admiration for Henry. He's a smart, very smart guy. And uh, I enjoy those guys, but... Uh, Network but producers always fight with networks. It's it's a it's a it's a sport, you know. You just have to be nice about it and, and kind of laugh about it. We can laugh about it and say things now uh, that I wouldn't say there, but uh, whatever. But but because Forensic Files is a hit nation worldwide, actually, it it surprises me honestly. It, it, because, you know, as I say to Vince Sherry, uh, you know, can you, can you believe two learning disabled guys came up with this thing? I, you know, can you imagine that? You know? But um, it's good for something. You know, every clock is wrong twice a day, you know? Bro broken clock, wrong twice a day, right? It's, it's correct twice a day, rather. So every dog has his day. So what were your challenges you faced during the shoots while making the series? And were all the police officers and the forensic inve investigators approachable for the scene? They were great. Everybody was great. Uh, you know, uh, the, you know, we didn't, we kept our word when, when, um, when the scientists gave us information off the record, we didn't burn them and use it. Um, you know, when same thing with the prosecutors, investigators, we we developed a good reputation right away uh, with them. Um, you know, working with them, you you did learn some things. Um, you know, we weren't in the investigation business; we weren't trying to find dirty laundry. 
um, they were always great and the, the scientists were always great and willing to help you and willing to help you explain it simply and accurately. We would often run some stuff by them. Um, uh, my son went into medicine. He's a forensic psychiatrist. I said to him, did you go into this because your father's goofy or something? You know, is, that, is that why you went into psychiatry? But um, uh, we call it the family business now, the forensic psychiatry. So he likes that. But yeah, uh, and, and he went into it, I think, because of the respect we had in our family, enormous respect for medical people, scientists, um, enormous admiration and, and, and respect. Um, many of them, a lot of them are on camera. Uh, even investigators, real investigators. When we often, when you see police in the show, uh, and, and B-roll, those are real police. We learned a lot from them. I learned a lot from. I learned so much. You know, we used to hire uh, convicted felons to help us shoot recreations because we didn't know much about crime, and we would say to them, "Okay, well, you know, what what would a bad guy do here?" And it's surprising how smart these guys are. I used to tell my daughter, they know more about you when you walk into a bar. They know more about what you're gonna do than you do, okay? That's how smart they are. They watch for who, two girls who come into a bar 10 o'clock at night, 10.30 at night. They know one of you is gonna leave by yourself, okay? The second thing that it, they know is you haven't parked nearby because all the parking spots nearby uh, are, are taken. Okay, and they're watching and they're gonna follow the person whose car is, uh, is, is uh, two or three blocks away. They know that, you don't, okay? That's how smart they are. I, I had a convicted felon come to my house here and I said, show me what to, what to do to make my house safer better locks, better things. He said, forget that. We can get into any lock, get into any house, any, anyone we want. I said, well, then what do I do? And he gave me some tips on what to do with that. I, think I, I never thought about it. It's because these people think differently. You know, I thought it was about the locks and security. No, no. One, one of the things he said, they, this guy said is get a, um, a, a National Rifle Association sticker and put it on your back window. I said, why? He said, because bad guys will never go into a house where they think there's a gun. Now in the United States, you know, guns are, anybody can buy a gun. I think my dog went in and bought a gun the other day. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, uh, but, um, but uh, interestingly enough, uh, I was in Brazil not long ago. Brazil has three times the murder rate in the United States and guns are illegal. Very interesting. So, um, and by the way, violent crime in the United States is uh, on the decline. On the decline, interestingly enough. Um, so anyway, what I've learned about crime from bad guys, from police, uh, I, and, and what I've learned about police, uh, and, and and what I and, and the FBI, uh, and what I've tried to t teach my daughter about it, and of course she ignores me, you know, and she thinks that if their father says it, uh, it must be wrong, you know. And I said, hey, you know, I'm, I got this from an FBI guy. He's, this is what he's. You know, but it's, you know, but it's about situational awareness in terms of, you know, if people want to be safe, they should buy a good book on situational awareness. Okay, because people really aren't looking at what they should be looking for. Um, you know, I, my son told me something interesting because uh, colleagues of his, uh, a forensic psychiatrist, was murdered in the parking lot uh, because this forensic psychiatrist testified against the bad guy. The bad guy came back and killed him. 
And uh, he was saying, uh, he said, well, they, they, they teach you not to walk to your car from the, from the building. I said, where do you walk? He said, to another car. Give, to, to give you a, a look at your own car and see if there's anybody around. You know, simple things like that. If, if there's if there's a, a flat tire and uh, some some guy in a good looking suit comes by and offers to help you, it's probably the guy who made the flat, flat tire. All kinds of all these situational awareness, or you know, every time there's a crime and you here in my town, I, I, my kids would tell me about. I would say, "Don't tell me." Happened at twelve thirty at night in the parking lot of a nightclub. How did you know that? Because that's where they happen. You know, it's not brain surgery. That's why police are pretty good today using computers and and. Uh, and predicting where the crime's going to be on a given night. A good friend of a policeman told me, don't ever go out on a Friday or Saturday night in the United States. The drunk drivers. Situational awareness. So that's those are the kinds of things that I've learned. Um, well, that, uh, situational awareness. In your time as a creator of the show, when you were research, researching for the case, did you ever happen to find an evidence or a clue that was initially missed by the investigator? Rather, were there any instances like that? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, yeah. It, you, know, it, uh, you know, it's an imperfect system. The criminal system is imperfect. The ju ju judicial system is imperfect. There are mistakes. Um, I, I have had I've had situations where the where um, scientists have admitted to me that they've made mistakes on the stand. It's like, well, did you correct it? Did, did you? Okay, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't admit it now. I said, why? The guy's in prison. No, but I can't. Uh, my reputation. Your reputation. You know. And investigators admit they, people make mistakes. You know, it's oftentimes why it's why now defense attorneys often are hiring their own scientists. And a little debate. There's nothing wrong with a little debate. You know. Um, uh, and and you know a lot of science. Some of the sciences we we did in the early years now has been debunked. You know. Hair, hair, visual hair analysis, you know, forget it. You know, that nobody uses that anymore now. They use, you know, DNA on it, uh, mitochondrial DNA on, on hair, but it used to be they would look at, look at it and see, you know, what, you know, gee, it kind of looks like the other, the hair at a crime scene. So, you know, you know, you know, all of us think that our, our knowledge is absolute our knowledge today but you look at these paintings of a surgeons operating without operating without gloves and masks well they believed that they were doing what was best at the time they weren't walking in without gloves and masks because they wanted to hurt the patient okay and i said to my son what are we doing now that 50 years from now people are going to say those idiots, can you believe that they were doing this? And he told me some things and I thought, wow, okay, all right. But he told me, I'll tell you, he told me a couple of things to do. He said, don't ever go into, don't ever walk in the grass without shoes, ever, 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 ever. I said, why? He said, because parasites, they'll get into your skin, you won't even see them. I said, really? He said, yes, yeah, it's from animals. They go to the bathroom and they, they you know, they, you know, it rains and you don't see it. The next thing you know, you're stepping in it. And, there's, and I said, I never thought of that. Well, things like that. I, I said, what else have you done, learned from medical school? He said, drink more water. People don't drink enough water. The third thing is, he said, I think people are, are, are using uh, MRI too much. We're going to find out that uh, magnetic fiddling around with people's bodies is, is bad. I said, really? 
He said, well, he said, look at x-rays. He said, now with, they used to be, uh, they x-rayed everything. Now, you know, the, uh, now we look back and God, see, now God, they x-rayed everything, everything, everything. That was bad. Well, they didn't know that. So, um, you know, it's good to be a little skeptical about things. And, uh, um, you know, it reminds me of the time that somebody said to me, I should have uh, uh, that LASIK surgery on my eyes. Nah, no, 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 I don't think so. I'm not gonna slice my eyes. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, they tell me it's safe. People who have it say it's great. I, okay. And I, I'm sure it is, but uh, a little skepticism is, is okay. And some education is good. With the advancement in the modern technology, the world has become a virtual playground. Cyber crimes now account for the major chunk of the total crimes committed. Have you come across such cases and are you planning to showcase such cases in the forensic files, files too? I, we did a couple uh, cyber uh, crime cases. Um, interestingly, uh, that's one of my son's specialties now in, in forensic psychiatry, the uh, cyber crime and and, uh, and, uh, and 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 so I hear about I hear about this stuff all uh, a lot and and especially as it, as it involves fraud and it's horrifying and it's disgusting um, and people don't really know the extent of, of, of it go, uh, going on. The problem is it's not visual. You know, um, you know, and what are you going to do with a recreation? Have somebody sitting in front of a computer? You know, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think we figured out how to do it well. The, the, the couple times we did it in forensic files, it was intellectually interesting. Um, wasn't visually interesting. I, I, I guess I should look at the ratings really and at those shows and and uh, and find out. But um, but you're right. It, it, more and more that more and more. Is, I mean, I've been the victim of of some of that. I just I was just uh, held for ransom. Uh, the FBI was involved with the threats against my children, um, potentially harming them if they, if I didn't pay a ransom. Believe it or not, this is the downside of being uh, in the public eye or producing TV shows. Um, the FBI gave me great advice, told me exactly what to do. I did exactly what they, they said and it worked out because they see it every day. It's horrifying, just horrifying. So, and, and the other thing is I said to them, I said to the FBI, well, how did they learn all the, about my children, where they live, who they were living with? How did they know that? They said online, all that, all that's online. You and I don't know, you know, I don't know how to do it, but they obviously know how to do it. The stuff that's out there about our lives is, is you know, I mean, if, if, if you really looked into me, you'd find out where I lived and, you know, all kinds of, it's, it's, it's not, no privacy today. I get phone calls on my unlisted phone number. I mean, it's, uh, I, I had my, I changed my number, my, my telephone number because of a stalker here. And within two days, I was getting, you know, scam calls on it. I mean, I, I, it's, it's a different world today, isn't it? And who would have thought we were going, going to go through this virus thing? Did you ever think we would be living through something like that? Ever? Yeah, that, there's another thing. Had we done a movie about this two years ago? With, no, that, that, no, that's never going to happen here. Now all of us are walking around with masks and, uh, you know, look gloves and you can't sit down in a bar anymore or a restaurant. Or, uh, you know. yeah. Yeah. And, and, and people are afraid of being on a plane now. I don't Different world, different world. But I think, to answer your question, I think uh, you're going to see some 
you're going to see some amazing. I, I was reading the some of the second season uh, outlines the other day. You're going to see some really interesting uh, crimes solved in ways that you you couldn't possibly imagine. Uh, I mean, I sit there and, and I'm and I, in these pitch meetings and I, and I say, what? It, did, did that really happen? So when I, after, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years. When, you, when, you're, when you've been doing it for 25 years and that's my reaction. You know that the technology has just, just, just exploded. <laughs> And I think the other thing, the one thing I, I forgot to say, I think is Forensic Files has contributed largely to the new interest in science for young people. I think that's been very, very rewarding. Um, I think science there for a while had, had been on the down the turn. And I think now a lot of people want to go into science. I think they see a value, value to it, an importance to it. Um, and uh, especially here in the United States, I think science had been um, downplayed, not, not important in the schools. I don't know about India. Um, but uh, by the way, my daughter-in-law was born in India. Um, uh, so I hear a lot about India and uh, what it's like over there. Very, very interesting. Lovely family, by the way. Very nice people, very warm and welcoming, her family. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing your valuable time with us. We enjoyed talking to you, enlightened us with your views, and we really liked it, and we loved, and we got to know about new cases, and we are very eager to, we eager for our next season of the Forensics Files. We are really, really eager to watch it, and I hope everyone have enjoyed the session with you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. I enjoyed every second of it. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Thank you. With this, I would like to conclude the third international virtual conference on contemporary progression in forensic science. I would like to thank all our esteemed speakers and their, for their valuable time and knowledgeable lectures. I am sure each one of us have learned a lot from them. I would especially like to thank Mr. Anush Kumar, Mr. Mahikar Singh Sansla, Mr. Kapil Parihar, Mr. Bhargav Rathor, for, and the whole team of a uh, whole team of Department of Forensic Science Legal Desire Media. The certificates will be sent online to the, all the participants and we will be notifying you about most such coming events. Do subscribe to our channel as we will be posting our other sessions, knowledge series, lectures and other guest lectures, forensics and law, other law courses and even on law policies. So make sure you have subscribed to this channel and please do follow us. A link, Please do follow us, Legal Design and Insights, and the public policy media and social media as well. With this, I would like to end this virtual conference. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.